talking about a 100% win rate against Rogan Warrior across 30-ish games played at live 5.30 GMT on Wednesdays on my Twitch channel, Davey underscore Hackett. The latest version of the deck is on the screen and in the description. If you want to hit like and maybe even subscribe the way down, that'd be great. Maybe you can be as happy as I'm about to be in this clip. Look at him in his little face there. Fantastic. So they started as rogue, it's poison. So Samuro's not gonna be helpful. Guidance, not really. I don't need to keep both overgrowths. One will do. I wanna overgrowth into double snaring ward. Lunar Eclipse is nice enough to have. So yeah, can I armor past all of the damage and remove the early game threats quickly enough? Because it's straightforward Poison Rogue, they can't blow me out with four or fives like the last one did. I might just hear a power down the one one. Oh, hoo, 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 that's nice. Um, the three threes are probably coming next turn. It's just a matter of whether I hear a power or guess the way. Let's see, next turn I go up to six mana for my turn after. Play Guff, that lets me hero power. I'm not really struggling for cards. So we'll just get rid of that. Because in the time it takes me to then remove it, it's done three, four damage. And they might shadow step it and get some more nonsense off of it. There's the double agent that I was expecting this turn. Very straightforward for me. So I can actually guff then guess the weight. Or if I draw the other lunar eclipse, guff, lunar, guess. Hmm. Maybe this is actually just Thief Rogue and I, I would have been better off with Samura. So that's probably a counter spell. Could be fair game, which I would not want to allow to activate. But I can't hear a power and I can't hear a power with this here power and play guff. Hmm. Uh, I could check for the spell ones with the resizing pouch. If I play Guff, I go up to... I can play Mali next turn, actually. Okay. I think I just let it happen if it's fair game. That's a nice draw, actually, because I can play it after gaining a Mana Crystal. C draws the other owl, which is quite nice. Yeah, it's probably fair. No? Okay. So it's either Entity or Ally if they chose it. And I don't see why they would pick Ice Barrier ahead of any two mage cards. Except maybe, like, exactly Hot Streak and Wildfire. Probably Oasis Ally. Okay, that guff needs to be removed. They've got a nature studies in hand. Uh, 
Okay, I'm gonna just play a bunch of stuff here rather than playing the Malagos this turn. So if I Living Seed, I draw the other owl. I should do that before I do anything with this hero power. Then I might guess the weight and see what I draw off of that. To discount the owl. Good. Okay, next check for mirror. Probably Oasis Ally. Yep. Okay, got in time. <sighs> Luckily, I, sp I spotted that synergy just in time. <laughs> uh, I didn't trade properly because it didn't work out that I was going to be able to kill the null. Um, this is bad though. I took out the next best thing. And they don't have a, a value trade for the null. There's two taunts in the way. Uh, they would have to use up a wicked stab on the three four to deny me the plague maw value. Is it plague? What's this guy called? Plague maw. I think that's the first time I've played this card. It works on my turn as well, so if they leave these 5-5s five up, I get 4-4s four with Rush on my next turn. It's pretty nice. And then next turn I can do Mali Strongman. And if I hit the mark of the Spike Shell, I can copy Strongman as well. Not sure that's the thing you shoot there. Okay, they got it. Oh, I don't have enough mana to actually play a mark with the Mali. This turn is always Malagos anyway though. I could, uh, can blue mark. And then play nature studies at the end of the turn. Or do I want to mark this while it's still got taunt? And I can one shot the three six. I always play the bloom here anyway. It's just which of the two I play the mark on. I think it's probably the strong man. Uh, I'm not going to play the second one. In case of scabs. And I don't want that getting bounced. So scabs currently kills the 8-8 my hands full or that full that gives me another owl and if they trade into the five one before they scabs then I get the strong man back so let's see I've got 11 mana next turn that lets me play solar scenarian And hero power, I think. Ah, 
Ah yes, but I'm overloaded. So yes, I can play Solar Scenarian. I can't do Solar Arbor up. They didn't seem to have scabs in hand. I think I'd just go with the Solar Scenarian though. The armor gain's nice to have. Oh, decisions. Do I chomp it or do I summon a 5 5 taunt? I think I chomp it. Uh, so I think it's pretty much scabs or bust. Oh, they did have scabs. So I think I got the strongman back now. Yep. Yeah. Only lose the 8 8. And I can play the lieutenant to chomp one of these. So now I play both of the strongmen. I actually did that a little bit quick. Nah, I'll just ramp while I've got the time. do some of the old fat bastard jokes from Austin Powers but I think No Hands has already made those plenty of times. So let's see, got Snarin Ward, I've got Arbor up. Got another Solar Eclipse, got Moonlit Guidance, got Resizing Pouch, got Ivas, got another Moonlit Guidance, got Gidra, got another Strongman, all still to get through. So I think I'm pretty favoured from here. Yeah, the best bet was probably the Smite OTK stuff. We've only got one Shadow Step left though. Both stabs going into that minion. Oh no, all right. Ah, decisions to decision. So many cards. Uh, I think I'll do guidance because I think if I hit Samuro, it plus Arbor up is a clear. It's not as much of a clear as Gidra, actually. Hello, Ben. Thanks for joining. Uh, it's not that much swag. It's when you get to whatever level with um, between all the classes, because it's a neutral. Um, you wind up with uh, golden core cards. So whatever replaces Malagos, if they rotate Malagos next year, uh, not next year, in April, uh, I'll get a golden one of whatever that is. I think I'll go Big Gidra. Seems good. Yeah, are you, uh, how long have you been playing the game, Ben? So the same way you get like golden cards from the uh, like the the army progression thing, like that's how I'm getting some of the golden. Um, how have I forgotten the name of the fractured and ultra valley cards? Is you get it through progressing through that, and then the way to get the golden core cards is progressing through the overall level 
tracker thing. Oh, good there to put a wicked stab into that. So this is their path to victory, is the things that they generated off of the Envoy. So if I Solar, then Ghidra, then Arbor up. That should work. I guess I just keep ramping. I don't really want to draw when I've got three cards left in the deck. Oh, and Demon, I'll last uh, Ashes. Yeah, I think I was a jumping on point for a lot of people. I've been on the go a little bit longer than that myself. Um, Frozen Throne, so 2017. I don't really want to trade this into both. So I'm going to leave this at one health. And then I think they have to go Solarian into massive, weird combo of spells. That's a good way to draw the Solarian. Yeah, I think it would have to be like Solarian into Rune. Or Generator Rune. Yeah, fine. Let's see how this goes. All right, so far. Still fine. Bit worse. I still had lethal through ice barrier, so we're all right. Working out all right so far. The thing I don't have in gold is Guff. It, that is beyond my price range. I don't. Uh, I don't tend to uh, to craft things in golden. I'm not Fino. Oh, uh, Celestial Alignment. Not really in this deck because you, you can't corrupt Strongman if you play um, Celestial. You'd have to generate a card at its original cost and then play it to get the strongman to be corrupted. Kept the leftmost, this is probably actually Pirate Warrior. Yeah. We've got Samuro, so all we need is a, a buff to go with it. Overgrowth's nice. Can you hear that, uh, that beat in that song I've got on Twitch soundtrack? That sounds exactly like something else. You're hearing this at a different time as me, so it sounds like I'm completely out of tune. <laughs> um, I, oh, I can't remember what that sounded like. But yeah, Celestial, you'd want to be running things like um, Lady Anacondra. I think there's deck lists for that still on uh, HS Replay. Now, do I want to play Moonlit Guidance this turn or later on? Next turn I play Overgrowth. I go up to six mana for the turn after next, which means that I could, for example, play Samuro Mark of the Spike Shell which should probably be a board clear against this deck. And if they have a, a hot enough start here, I might need it. But if I hold off on the Guidance until then... Actually, it would be after that. No, it's, I think that's too long to wait. This isn't a useful card and I can find a more useful card. I think I just take a Lunar Eclipse. I can play that with the Overgrowth next turn. Nature Studies is also a good option. It would have drawn a card out of the deck. But then I might have been a bit passive the next turn or so, and I didn't want that to happen. So I know I'm going to be able to Lunar Eclipse this next turn. Actually, maybe the... Maybe the Nature Studies was right, precisely because it drew. And then got me closer to stuff like Guff. 
Sonarian Ward, Solar Eclipse. But look, this worked out all right. That's a brilliant Lunar Eclipse target. Still got to ramp. Discounted the Owl. The Owls, actually, got both of them in hand. I can play both Owls next turn with Resizing Pouch. In fact, I'm now at the point where I can Samuro Resize and Patch and try and get one of the two mana buffs. Like Mark of the Wild, Mark of the Spike Shell. I suppose, well, Iron Bark, whatever all else. So they're running Amalgam. They're literally going to be running every pirate they can get their hands on. Um. I think that means it's not running things like Bar off in that deck. Well, this could also just be HS replay, somebody who's got a relatively new account and they're just putting in whatever cards they can. It's a very budget friendly deck. I don't really want to play the Samuro if it's not necessarily going to do anything. So, I think I'll just resize and patch for a six. Best in Shell's quite a nice card. In fact, if I wait till next turn, it's insane. So, let's trim a little bit of this damage off the board. In fact, let's just trim off as much as we can. And clear the way for Best and Shell. We can do Solar Best and Shell next turn. Which is amazing tempo if they're not running Barov. Let's take a look on HS Replay. And see what's in that deck list. Warrior decks that are running Amalgam. This might be the highest quest warrior win rate. Win rate quest warrior deck on HS Replay. Yeah, they've cut Barov. Be able to run that. Makes sense. So, uh, in the words of a certain former US president, Build a wall. Those two cannon shots would have been very helpful for them, by the way, in the last stage of the quest to try and clear some of this. But they probably have the other 3-3 three, three by now. The one that fires off two shots. Oh, they don't. This is more than one be brick Ben. <laughs> I think this is this is like this is maybe Hadrian's Wall. I don't I don't know where about you're from. This is like a good solid knee high wall. I think so far. It's the level of wall that I remember when I was little. My gran tried to jump over. So we lived out in the countryside. So there's lots of little like fields separated by. Uh, uh, walls like that. She tried to jump one of them. <laughs> Wound up falling and breaking her leg. Uh, anyway. So I could Scenarian to play the Strongman, but if I just wait one more turn, I can play the Solar Eclipse with it. Hmm. I could set that up this turn to activate it next turn. Downside, Gidra's right in the middle of the deck. I think this is a 50-50 on cheaper or more expensive. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so slightly more likely to be less. Oh, Ivis is excellent here. That's perfect. Uh, one shot's the 
Did I hear a power and Ivis and kill that? I think so. Oops. Maybe not. I'm just gonna send these face. They have to make that trade for me. They'll trade into the 3 3, but I, I don't really care at this point. I wanna start putting some pressure on their life total. Because for the rest of the game, they'll be swinging weapons and things. So, yeah, next turn Solar Scenarian, Strong Man. They're really gonna struggle to get through all this. If they don't have Bower Off, which, yeah. From what I'm seeing on HS Replay, it doesn't look like these versions of the deck run it. And they've played a shiver. Does this deck list also run double... Ah, oh, interesting. Um, this deck list doesn't run man the cannons, by the looks of it. The two damage AoE spell. Ooh, Mark. Okay. Hmm. So that does clear with Samuro. Feels a little bit unnecessary though. I think I can just leave up the 7-7. Seven, seven. Play the double scenario. Especially if I get these eight drops. And then next turn I can go Sumuro, Speaker, Mark and clear up anything that's left over. Ooh, that's that's very, very nice. I mean, they both went into the worst target. <laughs> but oh well. That 3-3 three, three is also a really good hit. They've actually got a decent number of cards left. Usually they would have less cards than this. That means I might have to wait on the Samuro and try and make it a full board clear. Yeah, that always goes into a 6-6. Six, six. And then the f weapon probably goes into the 2-5. If they've got to shiver their timbers, they should send that into the 6-6 six, six before they attack the weapon. I suppose it doesn't matter. Yeah. So they replace the weapon anyway. Yeah, because you're looking for a cannon shot to hit the 2-5 here. That makes less sense. Lethal? 11, 12, 13, plus the two sixes. I think that's exact lethal. Do Samuro buff. That goes there. All these go face. Plus the one from the hero power. Sets up exact lethal. Didn't even need the Samura that much, it just made things smoother. This film before a live studio audience. 